This video is part of the Technology Basics series brought to you by the Kakana Public Library. It will give an overview of the topic of canceling your cable service and signing up for online streaming services, otherwise known as cutting the cord. It will cover what cutting the cord is, the devices needed to make it work, the streaming options that exist, and how to decide which one to use. The concept of cutting the cord is simple. It refers to canceling your cable subscription in favor of a lower cost streaming service to satisfy your movie and TV watching needs. Let's look at the cost breakdown. The average cable bill is $217 a month as of June of this year. This most likely includes the bundled cost of internet, which is around $60 a month on average. You will need some form of internet connection when you cut the cord, so we will start with a base of $60 a month. This number can be much lower or higher depending on your area, or what resources are available to reduce its cost. I've provided a list of resources for cheaper internet alternatives in the description of the video. Anyway, we are starting with a base of $60 for internet service. This leaves $157 as the monthly cost for TV and movie consumption on the cable plans. On the other hand, the three largest streaming services cost $12.99 for Amazon Prime Video, $13.99 for Netflix, and $11.99 for Hulu. All three total $38.97 a month. The combination of these three streaming services will get you the majority of available TV shows and movies available for you to watch on demand. What it doesn't include is live TV, which is a bit more expensive and we'll cover later in this video. Now look at the total cost using the three streaming services totaling $98.97 and compare that with the $217 a month cable bill. You're saving a significant amount of money per month. Add in the fact that you can choose to only subscribe to one streaming service and the fact that you might be able to get cheaper internet and the savings are even greater. Now that we have an overview of what cutting the cord is, Let's look at what is needed to watch the movies and TV shows. Other than internet, which my Internet Basics series also covers how to get, you're going to need a device to watch these movies and TV shows on. The most common device is a smart TV. Smart TVs usually have apps included like Netflix, Hulu, or Amazon Prime TV. Commonly, the remotes contain shortcuts to these apps. If you don't know if your TV is a smart TV, check the menu on your remote for these options. If your TV isn't a smart TV, it's fine. There are what are known as streaming sticks that can effectively turn your TV into a smart TV. These are a one-time cost of about $30 to $40. The most common sticks are called Roku and Amazon Fire. I recommend Roku since it's a bit easier to use, but if you already have Amazon Prime and use Amazon to purchase goods online, that's also a good choice. They both plug directly into your TV and will allow you to watch movies and TV shows using streaming services. The final option is to watch using a tablet or smartphone. All tablets and smartphones can download streaming apps which allow you to watch content on your mobile devices. The downside is that the screen is much smaller than a TV, but it can save you from buying a TV and or streaming stick if you don't mind the smaller screen size. The last thing you'll need is a streaming service subscription. These are broken down into two categories, on-demand and live services. On-demand services allow you to choose which movie or TV show to watch on your own schedule. If you want to watch, say, The Andy Griffith Show at 5 p.m., that's no problem. You could type it in your streaming service and watch it every day at 5 p.m. if you wanted. Live TV is what you're most likely used to. The stations follow a set schedule and you tune in when a show or movie that you want to watch is airing. It's a matter of taste though live TV services are much more expensive than on-demand services. The most common on-demand services are Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime TV, Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, Sling, and many more. The most common live services are YouTube TV and Sling TV. You can use these as reference for the next part of this video. There are more streaming services that exist, but these have proven to be user-friendly, reliable, and boasting a large amount of content, which translates to the most content for your dollar. When starting to decide what to purchase, I recommend first starting with thinking about what kind of content you like to watch. Do you watch more movies or TV? Do you have a favorite network or show that you simply must be able to watch? Do you like the experience of watching live TV, or would you prefer to pick what you're watching? There's no right answer, and thinking about your personal preferences now will save you a lot of money in the future. Now that you have an idea of what you'd like to watch, I'd like to show you this website, which is a great resource. 
If you're unsure how to navigate to websites, check out my Internet Basics series where I cover the topic. This website is called JustWatch.com. It allows you to type in the name of a movie or TV show you'd like to watch and will show you the streaming services the show or movie is on. For example, let's say I want to watch Andy Griffith's show. I type it in the website, and when I search for it, it gives me a long list of services that have the content. You'll want to look under the stream heading and not the buy heading. Streaming means it is included with the subscription price for the given service. For example, Amazon Prime Video is listed here. It is the most popular of the listed streaming apps. I'd write that down on a piece of paper to remember it later. Next, let's say I want to watch Hell's Kitchen, the cooking show. I type that in and I notice that Amazon Prime Video isn't listed under the streaming section, only under the buy section. To stay on a budget, we'll want to make sure all of our shows are in the stream section. The most popular streaming site listed here is Hulu, so I'd write that down. Keep doing this process for every show or movie you think you might want to watch, using my most popular streaming services as a guide for which service to write down that I mentioned in the previous section. Then look at which streaming services you wrote down most frequently. This is probably the best service for you to use to make the most of your money. If your budget allows for it, you can always get multiple streaming services. If you have any questions about this video or anything related to technology in general, please don't hesitate to call the Kakana Public Library at 920-766-6340 to set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment. At the time of uploading this video, our in-person one-on-one sessions are unavailable. However, you can still receive help either over the phone or via a Zoom call. Thank you for watching.